Hi, I'm Jenna Chanel with the Environmental Services Department for the City of Fort Collins. And today I want to talk about a topic that's important to everyone, clean air. The city is committed to making sure our air is kept clean. And one of the ways of doing that is by controlling fugitive dust emissions. When we talk about fugitive dust, what we're talking about is the dirt, the soil, and even debris particulates in the form of dust that can be generated by a variety of activities. Dust has a number of impacts, not just to our health and the air that we breathe, but it also causes damage to property and the environment. In addition, dust also creates visibility issues, safety hazards, and in general, just a nuisance if you have to live around dust generating activities. There are many ways to control dust, and those are some of the things that I want to talk about today. In early 2016, our city council passed a fugitive dust ordinance, ordinance number 44. And this was to help control the fugitive dust operation and activities that go on within our city. In fact, before the ordinance became effective for the general public, it actually became effective for city employees first through our own administrative policies. And in this way, we lead by example by demonstrating that we hold ourselves accountable to the same standards as we do to the general public. So we're here at one of the city streets departments to talk to our very own guy groomer about the various dust generating activities that go on on his site and how he prevents, minimizes, and mitigates dust. So Guy, I wanted to come out to your site today because you have a large site with a lot of potential dust generating activity going on. And I was curious, what do you think about the term fugitive dust? Well, it's not necessarily the dust that we produce here on site that we're worried about. Just the natural activities that we go through and the processes we go through, we're going to create dust. It's not that dust that we're worried about. The fugitive dust is the prisoner who gets outside of our gates. <laughs> when that prisoner gets out, then we have to go track him down. So we, that kind of dust is the dust that we're worried about and what we have to try to mitigate. Once it gets outside, it's persistent. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for people's health. So that's the type of dust and the type of activities that we're trying to control. It's a pretty funny term, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't create dust through our processes. It's just what leaves our site boundaries is what we're required to try and control. Well, on your site, I noticed that you actually have a lot of variety of things going on. And one of the things that jump out at me are all of these stockpiles, there's so many different kinds, and I'm just curious if you can explain your operations a little bit and what that's all about. So one of the primary requirements of this project out here is landfill diversion. So as you look around here, you'll see piles of asphalt, concrete, compost, tree limbs, tree branches. We take all that material, we convert the trees and the branches into mulch the yard waste and the leaves and the compost. We recycle the concrete and recycle the asphalt. And the concrete and asphalt come from city projects. They're diverted out of the landfill to here. We recycle and crush them. Then those materials are bought by other companies and used in their projects back out in the city on the roadways, the streets, and other projects that contractors have out in the city itself. When people are coming on and off your site, um, to, to do this, I guess there's a lot of traffic that comes in and out. How do you control that as far as the dust? We have a track out program that we use over here by the scale house. It's 100 feet of recycled asphalt that when the trucks come through here, if they have dust or it's rainy and they have mud on their tires, any kind of debris like that, they track out off the scale onto the recycled asphalt and that captures most of the debris that comes off of their equipment as they're leaving the yard. In addition to that, twice a week out on the main street, the main city street, we have street sweepers that come by twice a week and clean the streets. I should add also that one of the requirements is tarping of the materials. So you'll notice as some of the trucks track out, you'll see their tarps start moving and they'll cover the material that they're carrying in their trucks with tarps. Also at the edge of our exit, there's a sign that we had made that says, please tarp your load before you leave. And it states the city ordinance on there also. 
when people aren't just coming on and off the site, I notice other activity going on. I notice loaders picking up gravel or, or dirt or material and loading them. And I was curious, how do you do any type of prevention um, when they're operating as far as dust control? So we call that minimizing and we try to have the loaders not raise their buckets any higher than they need to. And certainly when they drop the bucket down and drop into the bed of the truck, that distance is decreased, so it decreases the dust. We also try and have them load slowly instead of just dropping a bucket at a rapid rate and releasing all that dirt and dust at once. If they go slowly, it's a slower process and less dust. That's great. You know, there's a lot of just surface area uh, that people do have to, they have to drive back and forth on to do their job here, I noticed. so. Is there anything that you do uh, as far as prevention or, or mitigation just to keep your surface areas around your site free of dust? So that is a prevention technique. We have a dedicated water truck. It's a 3,000 gallon tank water truck that is solely used on this site. Um, so we pre-wet the major routes around the processing facility each morning. And anywhere from, depending on the weather and the dryness, we do it two or three more times during the day. But water is our main source of prevention and really for minimizing. Sure, and one thing I noticed when we were standing out here is it gets kind of breezy and I was curious what happens when it gets really windy as, as it can get sometimes and right. how you control dust when it gets windy. So when the wind picks up, we do have an ordinance. If it gets more than 30 miles an hour, we stop. We shut down operations. If it's not that high, then we will slowly back off and not cease operations, but curtail them significantly. All the things that you've talked about today are actual best management practices in our dust control manual. And I really appreciate the job that you're doing on here. You're doing a lot to control dust, which is very challenging on a site like this. And I really appreciate the hard work that you guys do. Yeah, it's a lot of work and we enjoy doing it. And any practices that we can incorporate into our plan, we try to do. Thank you so much, Guy, for having me out today. It sounds like you're doing as much as possible and a little extra on top of that. So I learned a lot and I appreciate you having me out. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for so coming much. out, you bet. As we've just seen, there's lots of ways that dust can be generated, but there's also ways that dust can be prevented, minimized, and mitigated. As a planner in the Environmental Services Department, our job is to provide training, education, and outreach to the public, industry, as well as our own employees. So if you need more information or you just want to learn more about fugitive dust, please contact the City of Fort Collins and we'll address your concerns and your questions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.